Motorcycle throttle locks. If you've spent any time on the internet, you've found out that these things are either completely useless waste of money or they will instantly result in your fiery demise. There seems to be no in between. But today we're gonna spend a little bit of time taking a look at these, figure out exactly what they do, answer the question, are they dangerous? And whether or not they're worth your money. Let's dive on in. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the show. And that is correct. Today, this might sound simple, but I've actually found myself on both sides of the throttle lock debate. And part of the reason why, I had actually never used these in the past. If you find yourself watching this video and you're like, dude, what the hell are you talking about? What are these things? These are ways for you to add cruise control to a motorcycle that does not have it equipped. They do exactly what the name says and they hold your throttle open for you so that you don't have to roll the throttle open. Now, as you can immediately guess, a lot of people don't like the idea of a mechanical device holding your throttle open. And that's where you get a lot of the, these will result in your fiery death comments. Well, I've been using these for about a year now and I gotta say, I'm looking pretty unexploded. So let's dive in and take a look at why these things seem dangerous, what the difference is between this $10 unit and this $150 unit hit the road and see which one you should actually spend your money on. Starting out with our no-name Amazon Basics throttle lock, it's just a chunk of aluminum that clamps onto your throttle. It would literally take me longer to explain how you install it than it actually takes to install the thing. So suffice it to say, even the most incompetent home mechanic can install one of these. These are truly universal, so as long as you don't run into any clearance issues with something like a set of Bark Busters, you can install them on any motorcycle and have a rudimentary cruise control system. On the other end of the spectrum, we've got the Atlas. This thing costs a whopping $150, which I am going to continue to harp on throughout this video because yikes, that is a lot for a device this simple. However, they are made out of stainless steel, which is a nice change of pace from the cheapo aluminum that got punched out of the same factory as all the rest of the crap on Amazon. The install takes a little bit more time and thought, especially when it comes to choosing which friction pad you need to use, but once it's mounted, the thing is secure. Now let's take a second and address the safety concerns people have with these devices. And I completely understand. Anything that's holding the throttle open could theoretically be something that you forget about and then cause you to crash because you're carrying more speed than you thought. But let me ask you this. Is it any different than normal cruise control? I mean, what is cruise control if not an electronic throttle lock? You push some buttons on the clusters and then the computer modulates your speed. In fact, I would argue that the bike accelerating and engine braking for you, it's even more likely that you'll forget that you have it on. But Spite, I hear you say, once you pull the brakes, the electronic cruise control turns off. With these throttle locks, the throttle is still forced to stay open. Sure, but here's the thing. I don't care about anything holding my throttle open because at the end of the day, as long as I've got a clutch lever, that's all noise. And this bike can go straight to red line and stay there. It's not going anywhere as long as I've got the clutch pulled in. The only real issue I see with that is if it prevents you from pulling in the brake lever. But even if it's really, really clamped on there, you pull the brake lever, it's just gonna open your throttle. If you've got the clutch in, all it's gonna do is make a little bit more noise and maybe make you seem like a little bit of a dick. But let's get these things out on the road and see if they're actually as dangerous if I'm going to instantly get struck with a lightning bolt the second I roll out. Spoiler alert, that's not gonna happen. But we'll talk about this on the road. Before we do though, a quick word from today's sponsor, Cardo. If I'm going on a road trip on either of my bikes, I'm grabbing two gadgets. One is a throttle lock and the other is my Cardo. Whether I'm out filming with Whitney or just cruising by myself listening to music, I always ride with a Cardo. Their Edge has all the fancy features you'd expect from the industry leading comm system. DMC mesh, long battery life, high quality speakers, voice control, and all the goodies. But they've got options to fit your needs and your budget. Click that link down below and use the code SPITE10 for 10% off your order. Now because I know people are going to have 
issues with these regardless of how safe I say they are I figured I'd take my antics out on the road and actually show you these in use so I'm currently using the Amazon basics one just because it is as far as I'm concerned the challenger here and as you can see it's doing the thing uh, I'm currently covering the clutch lever just in case I need to start slowing down but I mean it's doing exactly what it says on the tin. It is keeping my throttle open in exactly the position that I tell it to. And that's all I want from a throttle lock. There's no uh, weirdness about it. There's nothing that I consider to be uh, janky or potentially dangerous on it. It's actually a fairly elegant solution to the problem of spending hours and hours and hours on the freeway. Now, I know for a fact that uh, spending a ton of time on the freeway can get you into that state of highway hypnosis. And when you get there, remembering to roll your throttle closed can be one of those things that um, easily slips your mind, shall we say. So let's for a moment consider that I need to come to a stop, is this going to stop me from pulling the front brake lever? Nope. I am overlapping the front and the, the front brake and the throttle, which isn't great. That can be bad. It's going to cause you to put extra heat into the brakes, overwork your engine, all of that stuff. But again, clutch lever, disconnect engine from wheel problem goes away you have a rev limiter for a reason now real quick a couple of things i don't like about this throttle lock is uh the little thumb thing that you're supposed to be able to roll forward uh it doesn't really work all that well okay so you use the long part that you get more torque on the lever with anyway that that's that's very very easy to use uh another thing i don't love because it's actually on your grip, it can wear out some of the rubber, especially if you're changing your speed a lot. Like if you're in traffic and you end up rolling forward to kill, you are gonna start wearing out the rubber on your grip a little bit faster. And that's a bit of a bummer. I keep going for the imaginary sixth gear on the KLR. Oh. If only, right? If only. Now, the last thing I'm gonna mention in terms of cons for this is, let's say you're cruising down the highway and you're in fifth gear. I'm in fourth because I don't have a sixth gear to demonstrate this with, but if you're in fifth gear and you wanna go to sixth, you normally, you know, you're rolling on the throttle to accelerate past the car over there. You pull in the clutch. Did you hear that little rev? That's because I couldn't close the throttle all the way. So I ended up actually power shifting the KLR, which really doesn't do much. But that is something to point out. Uh, if you don't, if you have it engaged and you go to switch between gears, you are gonna rev up your engine. So if you're using it in like second gear for whatever reason, uh, <laughs> bear that in mind. You may accidentally cause yourself to clutch up a, uh, a shift if you're not paying attention. Now let's take a second and look at the Atlas. This is the throttle lock that I have spent the most time with. In fact, pretty much the entire time I've owned the KLR, I've had the Atlas on here. Um, I don't actually know what inspired me to get it. I just knew that I was like, me, I kind of like the idea of cruise control and this seems pretty snazzy, so let's throw it on the bike. And in fact, it is if not easier than almost every cruise control system, it's as easy. This thing is literally just the push of a button. So you're going down the road, you find your speed, you click the button, <laughs> job done. That's awesome. I really, really enjoy how brain dead simple this thing is to use. And then as you're just cruising down the road, if you find yourself going too fast, you can make minor adjustments to the pos throttle position very, very easily. Now, I will say from having personal experience with this, if you're gonna be making a lot of throttle adjustments, 
I would just ride with the Atlas off because you will end up wearing through the friction pad that it uses. And once the friction pad is spent, you lose your, uh, you lose your cruise control. I always carry the extra friction pads with me just in case, but it is still kind of a bummer that without that, the thing doesn't work. However, for literally single button press simplicity, that is a sacrifice I'm willing to make. It makes this thing so nice to have on a motorcycle. However, it's not perfect. There are some flaws beyond the consumable uh, pads. They don't fit on every single motorcycle. I tried to put one of these on my Ducati, but there wasn't enough room between the throttle tube and the uh, the switch gear. That's a bit of a bummer because I really wanted to use this on my cross country trip that I did uh, to Florida. I just couldn't because it didn't fit. And so I was stuck with just this guy. It's also worth mentioning that $150 price tag. Oh my God, is that so expensive? Yeah, they have a blacked out one that I think is $10 cheaper, but it, both of those are eye-wateringly expensive for a cruise control system. At that point, you're pushing up on, uh, you can add it to a Harley with electronic cruise for a similar amount of cash. Uh, it's, it's a lot to ask for something that's just holding open your throttle. However, I do personally think it is worth the price of admission. I've actually have two of these and I bounce them between, I, well, I used to have one on the KTM and I was gonna put it on the Ducati and fortunately it doesn't fit. So I have an extra now, which is a bit of a bummer, but that does also mean I have extra wear pads. So there is that. Now, seeing as we are stuck in the throes of afternoon traffic here and we are no longer cruising anywhere, let's pull top the tugboat over here and see whether or not we can determine which one of these is worth your money. Now, wrapping things up here, regardless of which one of these you choose, you're not really going to run into too many issues. These things both work exactly like they're supposed to, exactly as advertised. However, if it's my money, I am gonna go with the Atlas simply because A, it's better constructed, it actually feels substantial, and I have been riding with it for months on the KLR. It is very expensive, and I'm not gonna sit here and make excuses for it. However, you do get what you pay for. However, again, at the end of the day, these things are both going to work, and whether or not you go with the super fancy one or the cheap one, you're gonna get the job done. With all of that being said, I'm gonna wrap this video up. A huge shout out to Cardo for sponsoring this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.